Shabbat Shalom, all praise to the Ancient of Days, all esteem to the Most High Elohim. This is your brother L, and I have an honored guest with me today. I have Brother Patrick from Yes Ministries that Shalom. has taken the time today to join us and fellowship with us. This is a very wise brother right here, very righteous brother. I've seen his works for many years. Uh, him and myself, the Father has allowed us to do much ministry work together, and I'm going to put the information in the description box about his ministry so that you brothers and sisters can check him out as well. So Shabbat Shalom. And we just been in here for the past hour, hour and a half going through some scriptures and just flowing in the spirit. And so much was going forth that I felt the need to turn the recorder on. So some of these things we can share with you brothers and sisters as well. And of course, I got my babies in here with me today, too. So you hear them in the background. You already know. Hallelujah. So, yeah. Brother Patrick, uh, uh, a great revelation you were just speaking on, brother, is uh, the revelation about the sapphires yes. and how Moshe was coming down from Mount Sinai and how we read it in the scripture as the tablets. Mm -hmm. But you have here with you right now the Sefer, is that yes. correct? Yes, and sir. if you could, brother, pick up where you left off on that revelation you were bringing forth about the tablets being the sapphires. Yes, um, when you see in um, Exodus 32, you see, uh, when you see tablets, usually, um, right here, it talks about, it says the sapphires. So, um, it gives you a deeper description of, you know, how they would have looked, okay? Like, um, like for example, you see the Egyptians, they jacked it when you hear them say the emerald tablets of Thoth. So, right here, we got a Torah, and it's sapphires, okay? So, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a, um... It's a great thing. It shows you also, you know, it's not a light thing. It's not something to just throw, you know, astray. Now we know, yes, um, Moses then did break the tablets. Um, when when um he got upset about what Israel had done, what the people had done, you know, because I mean they just got, you know, the law, the instructions, you know, uh, on Mount Sinai. They had just got it and went in the idolatry like right, you know, after. So, you know, it's another reason you see, you know, in Deuteronomy a lot, remember. You know, remember what uh, the Most High Yehoah did for you there. Don't forget, don't forget, because you see also throughout Scripture, um, many times you'll see, uh, okay, a group forgot, like you'll see in Genesis, uh, they forgot Joseph, uh, speaking on the Egyptians right there. They, uh, you know, uh, or Pharaoh, uh, a Pharaoh rose up that forgot Joseph, a Pharaoh rose up, you know, didn't know, you know, you uh, which, uh, if you look in Egypt, they had so many of the books. Actually, if he would have just pulled out a book, he would have known about that. They would have had that in the archives for sure. Um, so, but back to what we we're talking about. In Exodus 32, uh, I just want to read what it says right here. And it says in Exodus 32, chapter 15, it says, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two sapphires of the testimony were in his hand. The sapphires were written on both their sides, mm. both on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the sapphires were the work of Elohim. And the writing was the writing of Elohim, graven upon the sapphires. Mm. So, oh, you got something to add, bro? Oh, brother, I'm just over here thinking that that shows the, the glory of our father and his attention to detail and how he knows his worth. You know, it, yeah. it, it makes me think of something that's written over in, I uh, believe the, the book of Malachi, whenever he was right. rebuking our people. Right. And right. one thing that he said is that we did not honor him. Mm. Uh, Malachi one, starting at verse six, it says okay. a son honoreth his father and a servant, his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say if the most high of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. So he goes on to say here later in verse eight, if he offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if he offer the layman sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Mm -hmm. So 
And it goes on down uh, verse 11. He says, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the most high. That's right. So that the father is basically saying, I know my worth. So y'all can't bring just something mediocre to me. And that's what I thought about whenever you brought that forth about how the tablets of the law was written on sapphire stone right. and you you also brought up later uh, or earlier how whenever the presence of the most high appeared that under his feet was like a work of sapphire stone i'm, I'm right. gonna go there real quick that's right and what, what that makes me think of that is like uh before. a lot of these little bootleg world leaders and celebrities and all that one thing that they do is whenever there's an event or a gala or a banquet, <laughs> what do they roll out under their feet? The red that, that red carpet. carpet. Red, like so. But all that is is a generic bootleg imitation of what the father had under his feet of the sapphire stone. That's right. Like it says in Exodus 24, uh, verse 10, it says, and they saw the Elohim of Israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. You know, so, yeah, a lot of these bootleg world leaders and celebs and dignitaries and all that, mm -hmm. they trying to roll out that red carpet to imitate the glory of the most high of Israel. Right. And also, when you look at their palaces and things like that, they got the two lions usually yeah. are on the crest of the nations. They got the lion and the eagle and all these mm -hmm. uh, creatures. Well, whenever we look around the throne of the most high, the scripture says that it has the cherubim that's like a lion, an eagle mm -hmm. and all these uh, majestic beings that's around his throne and in sapphire stone. It just shows how glorious our Elohim is. That, that's all I was going to say. Indeed. And, you know, with that one about the different nations, you know, using those parts, it was like they're glorifying like the creation part instead mm. of the creator because it's like they take one, they took one piece out of, what you were saying about the cherubim that have four pieces, they took one piece and they would be like, okay, we'll use that one and put it on the outside. So it's nowhere near as great. But that Sari can't do anything, but kind of, he'll never be as great. He tried to say he'll be like the most high, but could never be like the most high. Wow. He's in direct, he's in direct opposition to him all the time. Even though the father is in control of everything. So, we, you know, don't be deceived about that. The others in control of everything. And so what we see is, even if we go back to that, about the sapphires, um, <clears throat> what we see, that's very interesting. It go back to a discussion you did a while back uh, about wisdom, strength, and riches. Mm. And um, the fact that the Father is the wisdom, strength, and riches. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, since we brought that one up too, let's go to... Revelation real quick. Let's do it. Where is the lamb? Let's do it. Give, give y'all a hint of where to go. Let's do it. The the song of the lamb. Where is the lamb, right? Indeed. Indeed. I think I know so what you're talking about. So we're going to Revelation 5, of course. Yes, sir. And we'll start at, uh, we'll start at verse 12. All right. Mm, we'll start at verse 11. Got you. I want everybody to get the, the picture of it. So use your imagination for this. So instead of using our imagination for wickedness or having vain imagination, which is empty, let's use our imagination for this. Picture this. Picture the kingdom, y'all. And I be, oh, Revelation 5, 11, I'm sorry. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Mm, that's a number no man can number. That's right. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wisdom, strength, riches. Interesting said to receive that. And it's interesting you say that he is our wisdom, strength, and riches. Cause ain't that what he told Father Abraham? Mm -hmm. He said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. He said, I'm that. 
And then, like, I'm glad you went here because check out verse 13 of that same chapter, Revelation 5. It says, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. Heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever. It's interesting that it says every creature. So even the animals will be praising the most high and like they already do. Facts in their own way, mm-hmm. but what, what, what's so in interesting their about that? Yeah, That's their language. And it's interesting because uh, Hamashiach, before he ascended, one um, directive he gave to us was he said, "Preach this truth to every creature." Yes, a creature. Every creature, and that it is it, it's so powerful because uh, how the, the role that the animals play. Because even in the book of the secrets of Enoch, it talks about how people will be judged even for how they treat the animals, That's right. that the animals will stand up on judgment day. And it makes me think of like how a lot of the, the, the wicked, how they mistreat the earth. I was looking at a video the other day about all the trash that was washing up in the ocean and uh, it was a dead whale on the beach. And inside the whale's body was a whole bunch of Coca-Cola bottles and Ooh. yeah, plastic and all this pollution. And it, it killed the the wildlife in the ocean. And in Revelation, the scripture says that the father's going to destroy those who do what? Destroy, destroy the, the earth. earth. So okay. even and that the scripture talks about how nature itself will cry out against mankind or no nature. Nature is groaning and crying Roman, out right now, Roman's eagerly king. awaiting the revealing of the sons of Elohim. That's right. And, you know, it's it, it's. It's just something to think about because whenever our people were in power, even how we dealt with the animals was in righteousness. Even the animals that was destined to be a sacrifice, like they was very well taken care of. Like we prayed over them. We didn't mistreat the animals like we see today, like in the beef industry where they they throw the cows alive into the grinder. Like they don't deal with them in a sacred way at all. Like and then people wonder why that that blood that's in a lot of that you know, uh, meat and things of that nature, how it's making people go buck wild because that animal was killed. It was tortured. The last moments of that animal's life right. was horrible and it releases a chemical into that meat. And it's supposed to be dried out of, yo, cause, so that we don't have to eat because uh, we're not supposed to eat it. Exactly. So that, you know, that's got to, that needs to be done that, that certain way according to Taras. And they're not doing that in a lot of those uh, meat um, factories. They're not draining out all the blood. And the animal was killed in a horrible manner. So it's just like, wow. And that, that, that's, that, that's what made me think. Hamashiach said, preach the truth to every creature. Every creature. <laughs> and it's funny because whenever we was outside at the lake and we was going over the scriptures, a whole bunch of, uh, a pack of ducks just came over to us. <laughs> and while, while we was talking about the word, they was just gathered around. Yeah. And it's like, it makes me think like whenever we look throughout scripture, all the role that animals have played, like um, with Elijah, with the raven that mm-hmm. came and fed him. Yeah, yeah. The stingiest bird, everybody. Right. By and the then, then in the book of Baruch, when he wanted to send a message to those in captivity, mm-hmm. he tied the message to the bird. Right. And the bird took it to Egypt, to the other people, yeah. you know? And it's, it, it's interesting because still to this day, like uh, you got you got brothers that do the pigeon calling. Like I know uh, Mike Tyson used to be heavy in it and people don't know, but like low key, that's a subculture, like calling the pigeons <laughs> where they clap and then the pigeons come and all that. Yeah. Like that, that was an ancient practice of our people. Now you see dudes in neighborhoods all over the place doing the, the pigeon calling and all that. So it's, it's just real interesting how a lot of our practices and cultures and uh, how we deal with animals, how <laughs> that stuck with us. Like even today with the dudes that do the dog breeding and things like that. You got dudes that are able to breed pits and uh, bulldogs that become grand champions. Some of them dogs sell for fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollars, right. and a lot of these breeders be our brothers. So still to this day, like the father has made our hands skilled in dealing with animals. So it's just interesting to see the role that the animals will play in the kingdom too, mm-hmm. and the fact that it shows the animals speaking. Um, whenever you look at the highest selling cartoons or movies. All of them have talking animals, ironically. So, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, the scripture here is saying that whenever the kingdom is reestablished, that the father's going to give those animals the ability to speak as well. So 
I feel like the, the Gentiles use that in a lot of these movies like The Lion King and Avatar and all that with the talking animals because they pulling that stuff straight from scripture. It's not science fiction. Like that's how it's going to be in the kingdom. Even the animals will praise the most high. And as you said, they already doing that now in their own language. And like in the book of Jubilees, you know how the book of Jubilees talk about after the, what we call after the fall, mm -hmm. uh, what happened with the animals that their mouths got stopped up. So for them, not to be able to speak to where we stand, Adam and Eve would have understood it. Wow, that, that leads me to another thing. That's I why they like to make movies like what? Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Somebody speak to me, stand with their saying. That's a classic, by the way, too. <coughs> Here's another thing I wanted to ask you about since you brought that up, right? In um, Numbers chapter 23, mm -hmm. you know when Balaam, that he was going to curse Israel at the order of Balak. Some of the prophecies he was saying, like, was so powerful. Like, I want to get your thoughts on this. What's your thoughts on this? Where it says, Numbers 23, verse 21, it says, He have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. The Most High, his Elohim is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. The Most High brought them up out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. Verse 24, behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift himself up as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. I was going to ask you, what does it say in Yosefa? Those verses right there, especially verse 22, where it says uh, the most high brought them out of Egypt. He has the strength of a unicorn. And it, whenever it talks about in verse 21, the shout of a king is among them. What's it say in there? Starting with verse 21? Yes, sir. Okay. It says, Numbers 23, 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Yaakov, neither has he seen perverseness in Yisrael. Yahuwah Elohehu is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Eloah brought them out of... Mishraim, that's Egypt. Mm -hmm. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Oh, so it's the same translation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. And you know, that's that that's another thing right there. Uh whenever the Gentiles make a lot of these movies and things like that about the mm -hmm. the, the, the unicorn, which is a flying horse, right? With what? With a horn. And you know, I, I'm not saying that uh, the white horse the Messiah rides is a unicorn because it's going to be some know-it-all that pops up in the <laughs> comment section. <laughs> I'm not saying that, family. This is just a scripture discussion. Josiah, stop. This is just a scripture discussion where we just flowing in the spirit and seeing things. But it's interesting that the Messiah comes back riding a white horse. Right horse, right. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> Shot of a king is among them, too. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I hear that part about Shadow of the King, I always think about that and the fact that also um, Mashiach, you know, it talks about having like a voice of many waters. Mm. So he got that powerful voice, you know, when he speaks. And um, that Shadow of the King, like um, they blow the trumpets and, and it's loud and it's a shout. And, you know, with the trumpets, like with the shout, what is what is like the archangel? Blows the and, trumpet, and, and the and final trumpet. Shout, mm -hmm. and talks about a shout. So yeah, like a shout of a king. So it's like he was saying that like way before. It was like he got that kind of, you know, some of that per se. And that's interesting because he was a heathen prophet. Exactly. And, and yeah, he, this was Balaam, yeah, the false prophet himself. Yeah, so, the one Hamashiach said he hated. Yeah, like we stood him, like stood in the way, you know, the angel Yehovah, by the way, that's pre that's called pre incarnate, you shall Mashiach, y'all. So uh yeah, he said, Your way is perverse before me. Like, he was like, I'll leave the ass right there. I'll leave the donkey right there, boy. I'll take your head off your neck, boy. You Ooh. step too far. And that's another thing when you were talking about the uh, animals. That like the donkey the animal spoke had to more wisdom. You know how they use the word now? They say a dumb ass, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the dumb dumb right there was the, was the man. Wow. The ass was wiser than the man right there. The quote-unquote wise man. But what does the scripture say? The father of the word. Use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So he literally went to what people think of as the dumbest animal. And it was wiser than a quote unquote wise man that these kings were seeking out for wise counsel. Whoa, you know, 
That's very interesting because uh, in another lost book called The Keeper and the Ghost, which is basically yeah. the, uh, the scripture that the Ethiopians Glory use. Yeah. yeah. It, it said that uh, the animals would even come listen to Solomon's wisdom. It does say that. <laughs> it does say that. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and one of the plagues in Revelation is going to be that the animals are going to turn on people and devour them. Right. That's going to be one of the plagues. Kind of like how he talked about he didn't, because uh, the father knew this, he, he was like, you're going to take them out. He's going to take out the uh, nations of uh, uh, Canaan and he wasn't going to take them out all at once. Lest the, beast of the, lest the beast of the field. And it's interesting. Sometimes you hear beast, you hear it regular, and other times you hear noisome beast. Hmm. Why does it then say noisome beast? Are these different kinds of beasts? Are these more aggressive type beasts? Are these ones that will slaughter your tail if you walk right there near it? Because you got some that don't. That you got some that they you, they coming. Mm -hmm. So he was like, these are the type of beasts you ain't trying to mess with, boy. Facts. And even if you read in the book of Jess, you'll see some of that stuff that they also try to throw in movies like satyrs. What is it? Half man, half or it's half man, half. That 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 stuff was real. Yeah, like in it's the Book there. of Jasher, where uh, yeah. Zepho, that it, yeah. it was a creature that the it had a long Esau tail. Killed it. Yeah, yeah, Man. and it said from his head upward. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. And you know the the, the fact that Scripture com compares certain nations and men to beasts as well. Right, Nebuchadnezzar would change into a beast. So that was like a picture of the beast when they say the beast is enough. And the anti Messiah, the beast out and of the sea. Remember, it was seven years on that too. Nebuchadnezzar was like that for seven years. Wow. The same way it's about seven years. And it, it also to the beat. It also gives us an understanding, like, what's your thoughts on there being uh entities in human bodies that's not fully human? Like, um, you think it could be speaking to an animalistic type of nature of people, or that there are some are people that may spirit? look human, but they are not human. Oh. <laughs> uh at times it could be like, at times that could be like, okay, they're just, they're fully possessed. Like they got legion, but like not only legion, but they let it take like all the way over. So you start to even see a change in their appearance. Mm. Like it's quite a bit of them you, you know, you can see like that. Like no disrespect to the queen, like the, the queen of Igla, but I mean, she looked like. Animalistic. A reptilian. She look like <laughs> like it's not even a rose. Like she really looks like that. Like what's that? Oh, it's that one of them old popes. John, I think it was John Paul. II. One of them old popes. Every time you see him, like he look evil. Like you can, you know. And it's I mean, you got some of the entertainers now too. Like when you look at them, it's like you don't even see them. I'll give you examples. When we come up on something, I'll be like, turn it off. Because I see what is actually there. I'll see what's actually there every time. I see, it could be a still shot. It could be moving. Uh, Beyonce, too. Mm -hmm. You know? And on the beehive might be. Hey, if somebody on the beehive be listening, they're going to run around the corner or whatever. But <laughs> it is what it is. Y'all need to learn about it, too. So y'all can repent and stop following, you know, this wicked, blasphemous person. Hallelujah. You know, especially, you know, those of y'all that are that and y'all, uh, you know, claim to be, quote, unquote, Christian you know, claim to follow the Messiah, then, you know, you got to come up out of her, my people. <laughs> wow, interesting. Come up out of her, my people. Facts. You know, because a lot of the time she, you know, is representing, you know, the whore of Babylon because it said, you know, it's talking about come up out of her, my people. And it's talking, when it say that, it's talking about come up out of Babylon. You know, you see that in what, it was, what is it, Jeremiah and, uh, and in Revelation, right? Indeed. Yeah, so, you know, that's got to be the case in every way. You know, not just... Not just um, some of the ways got to be the case in every way, you know, because it talks about it being a whore of Babylon. Mm. So you think that is alluding to that spirit of feminism, too, that's on the rise right now? Absolutely. It goes with that. It's like it's in it. It's in it, too, about, you know, a whore's forehead. She, mm. She's stout, bro. She ain't trying to hear nothing. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm this. This is my body. I can do this. If I want to kill that baby, I can do this. It's my body. And it's like, nah, you ain't make it. You ain't yours. Facts. When that, when that, when it, when it, uh, guess what? You gonna return to what? You gonna, you gonna return to what? Yours, oh, yours, Eric gonna return to what? The dust. one who made it. Indeed. Your body gonna return, yeah, to the dust. Yours, yours, Eric gonna return to the one who made it. That's the most high you hold. 
Indeed. You're going there for judgment then. That judgment. You're going there then. Indeed. That's point blank period. Like Hebrews 9.27 is appointing under man once to die and in the judgment. Hallelujah. So they always talking about this. You only live once. That would be accurate if your judgment is dying a second death. But we supposed to stay living. When we when we live in when we live in Yusha Mashiach, we live. So whether we live, we live under him, whether we die, we under him. Mm. So to to touch on that a little more, you know, when they say that yo Lord, you only once people take that as, okay, we'll just live it up and do our kind of wickedness. That's what that meant when they said that. You know, and that sometimes we got to start defining terms that we hear so people can understand it when they hear it. You know, another one, another one. And people want to say positive vibes. Oh, good man. Talk for about example, that. We Let's get song. on that. Good one. For example, you know, they had a song, uh, Don't Kill My Vibe. Well, every time they talk about Don't Kill My Vibe, they was doing wickedness at that part. <laughs> so they'll say something that's true. Somebody will say something that's true. Somebody will come and say something that's true. Say they come and they rebuke me and they say, you don't need to do that. Or they say, you know, you don't need to be getting, you know, drunk at the table, fornicating, stealing, doing all that. And you talking about they killing your vibe. Mm. Yeah, that's because you you on a little vibe, bro. You on, you on wickedness. You doing evil. So they'll then try to say, oh, oh, no, nah, man, don't come over here with that negativity. So you calling something that the most high said negativity? Come on, we got a problem. What one to them that call evil good and good evil? Oh, bro, what you just pulled out, this is something that we can touch on about that that wicked Israelite king, right? Where it was at the time of, uh, I believe it was the prophet Micah. Let me let me pull, uh, pull that scripture okay. out. Talking about Ahab. Yeah, it was Ahab <laughs> and Michael, exactly. We can even go to the one where he said the trouble of Israel to Elijah. Exactly. Let me yeah, see here. Yeah, one of them called evil good and good evil. Put sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. Light and this and darkness. Hey, woe unto them. Yeah, that was Ahab and then it was uh, the king of Israel. They had the throne set up outside the gate. And this is when they had actually uh, locked. <laughs> it was Ahab both times. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it goes in line with what you were saying about how... They they talk about positive vibes and then just just speak what um. And also had I believe also had one of them locked up because he got mad. Exactly. And he was riding most of his life until that part. Exactly. That was Jehoshaphat, daddy. Wow. And Jehoshaphat was the one that was there uh, asking for a real prophet because Ahab then was hearkening to all the false prophets. So that's how this situation come up when uh, Ahab get mad. I mean, talking about he don't speak nothing good of me. He don't speak nothing but bad. Of yeah, that, that, that's, the, that's the scripture I'm looking no, for right now. What you doing bad? You know off the top of your head where that was at? I'm looking for it right now. Let me see. Let's see. Kings. I'm trying to find it right now. And it was. First the, Kings 22 is what it looks like here. First Kings 22, verse. You can start at 7 if you want to just talk about that Jehoshaphat asked for an actual prophet. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> here we go. And uh, Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Most High that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Most High. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So... In other words, he was saying that uh, this dude's not positive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, he don't, he not bringing no positive vibes. Like, right. and then it said, then the king of Israel called an officer and said, "Hasten, not a yes man, <laughs> right? Indeed, you need, he a, said, you need that type of guy." Hey, right. Hasten hither Micah, the son of Imla and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah said each on his throne, having put on their robes. And then verse 11 and Zedekiah, I'm trying to go to the part. Oh, here it is. Verse 13. It says, and the messenger that was going to call Micah spake unto him, saying, behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. So he was telling him, man, be positive, bro. Like, tell us something that's going to encourage them. You know, tickle tickle your ears. They want to heap one of them teachers that. 
Itching ears. Itching ears, man. Wow. I ain't and, to hear that, man. And you, you know what was what interesting? It, even to this day, bro, like, and it's something I've said often, that it, it's a lot of videos on my channel, right? Most of them is dealing with, like, us taking a look at our, ourselves, doing inner reflection, fruits of the spirit, like doing the works I, of the most high. Like talk, yeah, those be the ones with the lowest views, but let me do a video. All I got... <laughs> Put if if Esau is or or white man anything like that is in the title of the video, them be the ones that do numbers. Yeah. That lets me know that our people still got itching ears. Like uh, a lot of us really don't care about the fruits of the spirit, gifts of the spirit, being better fathers, husbands, mothers. Uh, you know, ministering to the people in the nursing the home, the prisons, the orphans. Uh, being baptized by the water of the word. Folk don't care nothing about that. Just tell me how, just tell me about these white folks. Tell me how wicked these white folks and these Arabs are, and I'll show up. I'm ready to hear that. No, I don't, don't want to hear about don't changing tell them the about that we, that we, that we get the wicked at times. Don't tell me I got to repent. It was right. always like the message of the prophet was always repent. So that, that's the version today, like what the prophet was talking about. Like, don't be talking about the fruits of the spirit, gifts of the spirit. I don't care about ministering to no widows and orphans and all that. Don't be Tell me, me about gotta, Esau. Don't be, don't be telling them we got to stop smoking weed. <laughs> don't be telling them we got to stop smoking weed. Got to smoke that weed, man. That, that, that's right. not me. They'll say that. You, you're killing my vibe. I'm telling man, I, that happened in person. But that was the truth. You blowing my heart, man. Facts. Yes. Heard this in person. Yeah, you so like well, with a lot of the Hebrews, they they not really on that uh positive thinking, like be positive. They like, man, y'all don't talk about Esau enough. Y'all don't talk about these Arabs enough. You know what I'm saying? Right. Y'all y'all don't talk about these heathens enough. I want to hear about these heathens. But we talking about the doctrine that's all. <laughs> so that's more important than 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 that. It's because y'all y'all that's looking at the flesh when we were not after the flesh. Indeed. War against those qualities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, does he use does he use uh flesh and blood to do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, just like uh but they are talked about many times on here. Um, does is that just like how the father would use us? Yes. So he like, well, let me get that group too. But first and part is the father don't need that many. Indeed. Father get one. And you started at what? Like the word said, 1,000. Mm. You get that one. So when you with the Father, you still in the majority. Mm. You get 1,000 standing right there talking about this or this, this or this, this or this. You still got the majority. Mm. You got that great cloud of witnesses like Hebrews 12 and 1 say. Indeed. So that one's also, in a sense, telling you keep going. Indeed. Since we have that great cloud of witnesses, let's go there. Let's do it. Hebrews 12 and 1. All right. Hallelujah. Indeed. This is what the Shabbat is all about, family, going over these scriptures. And this this right here, this this is what gives us that life yeah. to keep going. I'm there. That's right. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 and 1. And it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, compassed about, surrounded, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Now, why is he then saying so great a cloud of witnesses? Because if we were to go toward the end of, excuse me, if we were to go to Hebrews 11, we would see a lot of times they call that the wall of faith. You know, how you hear about the wall of fame and everything like that. It's a wall of faith. So it listed a bunch of different people uh, that by faith did different things. But you see, it said by faith, they did. You'll see that by faith. Moses forsook Egypt, right? So he did something. So it's faith and works. Noah prepared the ark. Prepared. He did something. It was by faith. That's, you're getting faith and works. Mm. They did something as a result of that. So that is your great cloud of witnesses. They are witnesses that they were true witnesses. True witnesses deliver souls. Mm. That's from right. Proverbs. Wow. So the true, the true witness, you shall see up. He delivers soul. That is the true witness. That's why also what? The witness is in us. He put the Holy Spirit in us. The witness is in us of the fact that his other what? Validated him. And it's in us. So now we what? Hey, we Joe, Joe, stop running. also stop running witnesses. Just like you know, the two witnesses are also coming. Joe, stop running. I just say in Revelation 11. So... 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every... Hold on, hold on. Cloud. A cloud of witnesses. What you thinking about, like, he uh, went the cloud before, of Sinai? Yeah, yeah he the went pillar before of cloud? The pillar of cloud, yes. Uh, he went before him as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's why you see, even in the, in, the, in the tech world now, they talk about something like cloud or cloud computing. They want to put something in the cloud. Basically, what they want to do is, basically what they want to do is when you look at this, because if you look at what the cloud did, if you look at what the cloud did, when the cloud went before them by day, so it, they got led, but it also what? Covered them. You look at a cloud, clouds cover you. Think about it when you hide outside too. Mm-hmm. Let's just use that right now. Think about it when it's hot outside. You be hoping for what a respite sometimes from this when it's right there. Well, that's what a cloud does. Mm-hmm. Think about it gets cooler when a cloud is standing right there. Mm-hmm. But a cloud also what? And we're talking about physical cloud. We're, we're go back. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna get to. We just talking about the cloud. Uh, the cloud. Of, or we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna get y'all for example. We'll use natural things. Stuff you can look at and see every day. But all you that say, oh, we can't see and we don't know that's it. No, creation show you all the time, like scripture said. Hallelujah. So, a cloud, what is it, what, what does it do? Is it having it? A cloud is a lot of different things in it. Sometimes it has condensation in it. Sometimes you see the light boat going mm-hmm. out of what? A cloud. So that means a cloud is storing things. Well, that's your same principle in the tech world. They want to store everything. They want you to what? Go to the cloud to get it. Now, that's going to segue us into what? Let's talk about this cloud of glory now. Let's talk about that pillar of a cloud. What would be in that pillar of a cloud? A lot of times when you would see, or even when you come in the tabernacle, you would say he would appear what? Like As a, a cloud. cloud. Right. Yeah. So, this is your place. Your one. This is your place of nourishment. This is your one who will what? Provide. This is your provider right here. When he comes down and he does this, this is what it is. Like when we talked about earlier, what? That you said to Abraham, what? He's his shield and his seed and great reward. Mm-hmm. So, relating it to the tech, again, as far as they get the cloud, which they took that from, obviously, is they want you to go to that spot to be able to get all that you need. So, for example, even like, for wanted to do. If you look at Apple, mm-hmm. they technically had a cloud uh, before we really was calling it cloud because because of the sense of they wanted to have everything what? They wanted you to get on the Apple, so what did they do? Even before they even before they came up with iCloud, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. If you looked at it, you had your iPhone, you had your iPad, you already had your you had your iMac, mm-hmm. your computer. So they wanted you to sync it to that. So you could just go to that one workstation and you would have what? All Apple products. Mm. Now we know Apple, quote unquote, got their stuff from a wicked source, a wicked entity, because the logo that you can see all the time, I'm on the, the dog the, the on thing with the bitten fruit. So when we see that, that means that thing would have also given, given them and also there's some of the others in tech in its world what? Some type of knowledge of what? Something about a cloud. So they would have them name it something like that. Similar to that. Mm-hmm. So, and then even if you think of Final Fantasy VII, the main character in that game was called Cloud. Mm-hmm. That was his name. So it's a lot of stuff when you look at things as it pertains to um, a cloud. But those are the different things that you would see when you think of a cloud. Now, we can go way into the whole thing with cloud, but we're going to do that. We'll move to something else. But... That's a good gist of it, and that that's a good that's a good start for everybody. You know, you can go and look or into it, but that's a good start for everybody to get it as far as it pertains to the cloud. So let's let's finish the uh, Hebrews twelve and one verse. All right. All right. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. And mm-hmm. let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Something me and uh, Brother Larry have been talking about uh, today is 
how the adversary loves to use desperation. You want to operate on that? Oh, absolutely. Because you see right here, patience. Run the race with patience. So that they want you to not with patience, but he wants you to be be anxious. Which the scripture says, be anxious for nothing and careful for nothing in Philippians. But what with all what prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto Elohim. Absolutely. And we can also, if you want to tie in, the, even with the story of Daniel, you can tie that in. When he was praying, he had to push through for 21 days. So, yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and well, we definitely got to get back to that cloud because mm -hmm. I want to go to Psalm 18, which is one of the oh, yeah. most powerful okay. scriptures. But uh, I'll touch on that desperation uh, real quick, though. Earlier, uh, before we were on record, we were speaking about uh, desperation, how the enemy uses that to tempt us. And like think, think of one example like this. Let's say you got a sister on a job, man. Let's say uh, she has a heathen boss. And let's say that she really needs this job like to take care of her children. The boss knows that, the heathen boss. And like we've seen this take place. I've had sisters yeah. tell me where... They pull you in that office, you know, and uh, and give you that that wicked proposition like, hey, um, either you let me have sex with you or you be basically like turn them into a concubine or you ain't going to have this job. Mm. And now the sister's in a situation where like she's desperate. She needs that income and more sisters than would admit have took that proposition. And become like that uh, that heathen boss's side piece, because not because they particularly wanted to deal with him or liked him, but they thinking about feeding their children, and it was because of being in that desperate situation that they put themselves into sexual subservience to a heathen. That's just one example how the adversary would try to take advantage of desperation, you know, and he he tries to put us in situations where he can tell us no. We are speaking about that earlier, about mm -hmm. the power of no, right. that whenever somebody tells you no, that almost kind of puts people in, uh, I don't want to say a desperate, but it puts you in a situation where you like, man, I want what I want and I want it now. Right. So it, it makes them do things that they wouldn't want to do. Like they used to say, do something strange for change. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, uh, right. So... <laughs> when people get desperate, they'll do something strange for a piece of change, you know, and that that's what the enemy wants, man. Like he, he wants to put us in desperate situations. And you brought up a good example when our people was uh, in the wilderness. Right. They was hungry. They was thirsty. So right. they tempted the most high because they was tempted. The father said, you, you tempted me these 10 mm -hmm. times. And it was because they was in a desperate situation. Like we hungry. We thirsty. The opposite of Abraham. Right. Like Abraham was tried 10 times and he passed it. Hallelujah. And they you know the what? opposite. That's probably why Hamashiach told us in Revelation. He said um, that you shall have you shall have trial Tribulation. 10 days. Tribulation. 10 days. Yeah. Tribulation 10 days. Because well, what he wants us to do is understand the enemy's MO is to wear out the patience of the saints. That's right. It talks about that yeah. in, uh, in Daniel. But we got to have like that anointing that the children of Israel had in the, uh, the, the clothes of the children of Israel. It said for the 40 years, their clothes didn't wear out and their shoes didn't wear out. Like we got to have whatever anointing was in the, their clothes when they was in the wilderness. We got to have that anointing in our soul, the anointing not to wear out. Mm. Like, have you ever thought about that? Like the scripture says for 40 years, like I, I got shoes that I work out in. They, they don't last me five months. Right. I couldn't imagine them lasting me 40 years. So the father put an anointing on the clothing where it didn't wear out. So we need that. We need that same anointing on us. Maybe that's why the scripture says we must be clothed. We must put on mm -hmm. Yeshua Hamashiach yeah. like a garment. That's right. Like whenever Nimrod put on the garments of, uh, of Adam, right. that's when he became, he got superhuman strength. Out. He conquered the earth whenever he put on Adam's garments. But we have the second Adam who is Yeshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Yeah. One greater than Adam. Yeah. So whenever we put on Yeshua like a garment, we become more than conquerors. We become greater than a Nimrod. Ooh. Whenever you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I feel like that's what will cause us not to wear out and so cause us not to be desperate. Be, exactly. Be overcome by the, you know, the, the accuser of brethren as well. You know, the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. You know, when we 
love not our lives to the death, you know, because we put on your Shemashiach. So we don't, of our life, it's not us anymore, but it's him living through us. Uh, like like John the Baptist said, uh, he must increase, must decrease. So th you, you think that's how we be clothed with Yeshua HaMashiach is first to be clothed with his mind. And that's the why the scripture says, yeah, that's why scripture tells us to meditate on uh, the law every day. And I feel like along with that, meditating on the words of the Messiah every day, meditating on the words of the father every day. And whatever the spirit leads us to meditating on the Psalms every day, right. well, whatever the spirit leads us to meditate on, we got to do it every day, day and night. And that's how we become clothed, yep. you know, with y Yeshua HaMashiach. Consistently and, you know, consistently and with, with discipline. Right. You know, unfortunately, a lot of us uh, aren't disciplined like we need to be. And that, this verse is actually saying that, you know, Hebrews 12 and 1 is in that when you lay aside, to lay aside every weight. You know, to lay aside those sins is what it easily um, besets you. And to run you know, the race. Like, that's discipline. Think, think about track and that. field. Think yeah. about training for it. Right. Training like, for it is, you know, training for it is, you know, discipline. Training for, yeah, training for track and field. Training for football. Like, those, you know, those things are, are tough. Like, a lot of them, they train, you know, a bunch just to have that chance every four years to try to, you know, uh, be a Olympic champion. You know, fact. that takes... That takes discipline to know it's okay. This is four years off. Yes, they have the world championships, you know, in between as well, and and that's very important. But buddy, when you you know the highest thing, quote unquote, in in uh, track and field sports is to is to win at Olympics, you know, and you know also you of course want to set you know that world record too. But you know to to be an Olympic champion, that's that's what you train for, you know, as it pertains to track and field, and and yeah, that, that is definitely uh, not an easy thing to do. That's why it's not many that get to that level. Indeed. And we know, we know <laughs> track, you know, the Olympics is next year. So we right on time speaking about this. Yep. And track and field is one Olympics. of the main attractions Where of is that, Tokyo, the whole Olympics. I yeah. And pe people love track and field. And that's why it's powerful. The scripture gives us mm -hmm. that analogy and metaphor. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we are like spiritual Olympians, yep. you know? We're spiritual Olympians and we have to be disciplined in this race. Just like the Olympian, like we know we're Brother Kendrick, like he'll train right. two, three times a day. Right. You know, like he probably somewhere training, right? Well, not now because it's Got Shabbat. It, yeah. But right. the fact remains, like that's why the scripture tells us to meditate day and night. That's why the Levite priests, they did a, a daily and evening sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like day and night, we got to do something that's training our spirit so that we're putting on Yahushua Hamashiach right. by that daily diligence, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I'll back, back to the cloud thing. I want to shoot over hit to Psalm number, 18. Hit that verse 2, though. Of uh, Hebrews yeah, 12? Hit that verse 2. All right. Let me pull that up. Because you talked about putting putting on you. So we yes, sir. This. It says, looking unto Messiah, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. That verse so powerful. Ain't it though? So that means he he was looking at his reward. It's like with with, with the track runner, they always looking at that finish line. Lord, right. it, it, it makes me think about uh like the Kentucky Derby, right? Like the 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 horses, bro. Like uh they wear blinders so they don't see yeah. what's going on in their left and right. right. So they got that narrow path vision, and they and uh, I think about the Olympic track and field runner, like they lean into the finish line, right. like they lean into that joint. Come on. Fall into it. Yeah. Lately we've been saying people fall to get the dub. Indeed, bro. <laughs> Indeed. So I, I feel like that's yeah. how we have to be spiritually. Like we got to lean into this walk, you know? Like we, we got to run like like that horse in, in that derby. Yeah. Not looking to the left or to the right, but that narrow vision. And I find it interesting with the horses, the champion horses, the ones who be winning, like they wait until the last leg of the race to burst forward. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes they they could be in last place. Many last shall be first. Kind of like Usain Bolt, how he runs. Right. He kind of right there. Now sometimes he may be near, the, but a lot of times his start wasn't really that wasn't really that fast. It'd be somebody get out, you know, faster, like Justin Gatlin and stuff like that, you know, or Tyson Gatlin. They would get out faster, but he'd be right there close enough, and then at the end he pulls, you know, he pull away just like a race course, yeah. And that, that's what we're doing in this walk. Like, that's the patience aspect. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of us bursting forward to get into the front of the pack at the beginning, right. we kind of, we, we conserve our energy. So, in a sense, we are like clouds as well, storing 
the power of the most high, okay. you know, storing his word within us. Like, like plants that store, uh, that store energy from the sun. Indeed. Well, when you think about photosynthesis. Indeed. So we, we store, like David said, your word I've hidden in my heart. Mm-hmm. So I and might not sin against you. your word is like fire shut up in my yeah, bones. That's right. So we store that energy. We store that electricity. Like it always talks about the angels around the throne of the most high that they move like what? Like lightning. You know what I'm saying? So like we store the lightning and energy of the most high within us and we hold that. And that's what helps us endure and have that patience. And yeah, that charge. And it's interesting because it it talks about whenever a new king of Israel was anointed. And even with Joshua said that Moses gave him a what? A charge. We know that can mean two things. He gave him laws and instructions to lead, but he also put his hand upon him. And he gave him that charge, that anointing, that anointing charged him up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, bro. Matter of fact, let, let, let me pull that scripture real quick about the charge. Yeah, man. And that, that's what takes place through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us that charge, bro, so that we can run that race and endure to the end. Is that a play we talked about that day that someone kept his charge to? I mm. think it might that as well. I think it might have been a leader, though. But that's Here that's we go. Uh, Deuteronomy 31, 23, it says, and Moses gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge Charge, and said, be strong and of a good courage for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land, which I swear unto them and I shall be with thee. So that charge is an instruction. It's a law, but it's also an anointing to give you an energy to burst forward Mm. like that racehorse, like that track and field Olympian, like. You know, I always talk about how I mentioned that earlier, how the champion horse, sometimes it'll be at the back of the pack, but then it'll burst forward and be and get first place. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of the proverb, uh, the end of a thing is better than the beginning of a thing. Right. It don't matter how you start it, it's how you finish it. Isn't there a place in Ecclesiastes uh, similar? I believe uh, the so. The race is not given. To the swift or to the strong. Oh, uh, Yeah. So that you you think that's what it is like that patience. This is the faith and patience of the saints. That's what it says in Revelation. So we got to hold that charge. Yeah. And, you know, people aren't, you know, talking about it. They think we're going to get raptured away or not going to have to go through it. You know, even even in Acts, I believe it was Paul talked about uh, through much tribulation. We entered it. Mm. Mm. And um, even with that charge, when it was, I. Thank you, Father. I knew it. Genesis 26 and 5. Mm-hmm. It, it was Abraham. <laughs> because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Ooh. My commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Oh, bro, bro. Now, that's before, bro. Now that's before when they say, quote, unquote, the law. That was Abraham, everybody. The father of faith who, who you, you need to, you know, pay attention to there. You know, and, and it, say he kept his law. That's what it said. Kept that charge. And, and it, that charge part was the word I was really hitting on right it's, there. Yes. It, it, it's powerful, bro. So it bro. stayed with him. He right. kept it. Yeah. It's almost like whenever <laughs> you're charging up a phone or a tablet, like, you know your tablet or your device is done. They'll say when, it hold charge. Right. When that yeah. joint do not hold a charge, yeah. like, it could be plugged up all yeah. night while you sleep. You wake up in the morning, it's still 5% right. battery. You'd be like, charge. man, this phone is trash. Yep. That's how the father be looking like when we can't hold his charge. Yep. Or we say that, or you... Or you say that connection from in between, cause mm. cause your cause your I get a, your source your, that source it always got that power. So it's in between your charge or or you your oh. so it kind of it, it it also reminds me of a spot that we were also gonna touch on was was Daniel was in Daniel okay what happened in between what's the interference in between what broke off what caused it to break off. You know, sometimes I have to follow about that. If I'm not hearing it, like, clearly I'm hearing it, but it's like, I want to be sure to do his command exactly as he gave it. You know, he's not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all, you know, assemblies of the saints, right? So, you know, you know, I'll say something like, um, Father, I know you're the ultimate communicator. You're perfect. You created what we say is communication. Like, <laughs> you probably have a greater word for it, but that's, that's all we could come up with. So... You know, we, you created that. So it would have to be either on my end or in my heart or something trying to create an interference in between, Father. So, you know, I just ask, you know, Father, can you remove that the way your sheep know your voice? 
you know, they won't follow the voice of a stranger, like things like that, you know, to make sure that, that you know, that's it. And we don't, we don't talk about stuff like, you know, this enough. We don't talk about trying this enough, you know, like we should so that we, we can, con you know, continue on, you know, we don't want to be simple, you know, the simple, uh, believe every word, <laughs> mm. you know, so <laughs> Proverbs got jewels, but yeah, yeah like, it does. you know, or the simple pass on, you know, they see it, then they pass on. Indeed. You know, to just, you know, hide themselves from the evil, right? You know, how interesting, hide themselves from the evil, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what what that mean? How, how you know to hide or what else did he do? He did something. Like, to go and hide, if I'm playing, if I'm doing something, even like hiding, hiding if I was to just sit right here, like where I'm sitting in the living room, and I'm talking about I'm playing hiding, but I'm standing right here. You know, in the middle, they they they, they, count, they come right here. I'm the first one to get tagged unless somebody was closer. They were standing right there, but... I'm going to do something. I'm going to hide. That's it. I'm going to hide behind the couch. I'm going to hide behind something. I'm going to hide somewhere. I ain't going to stand here. I'll, you know, I'm going to lose. I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. So hide. You know, like we said, hide that word in your heart. You know, that you, you, know, that you may not sin against him. You know, hide. You know, uh, like, him, uh, like him keeping, uh, like him keeping the people or that you may be hid. In the day of yours, and which is in Zephaniah. Yeah, he even calls us and the Zephaniah hidden ones. Means, yeah, exactly. Look, look, matter of fact, let's go to that Zephaniah real quick. That, that's what I was turning. He who is hidden by you. That's what Zephaniah means. Yes, hide us in the shadow of your wings. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you and that, that, that's, there, that's, you that's, the that's the reference of the cloud again. You're that hidden, right. The scripture right. even says that... Uh, right. Like, think about it. In the beginning, it said the Most High hovered above the waters. Like, mm -hmm. you know? So, wh wh whenever he overshadows us, it, it even says whenever Miriam became uh, pregnant by the Holy Spirit, it says that the Most High overshadowed her. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It overshadowed her, right. Yeah. So, you said that's in Zephaniah? It's in Zephaniah, yeah. Zephaniah means he was hidden. Like oh, yeah. Um, Zephaniah 2, verse 1. And, verse, yeah, this is one of the most powerful scriptures. Gather yourselves together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Most High come upon you, before the day of the Most High's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Most High, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Most High's anger. Mm. And I feel like that that goes perfectly with Psalm 18. Let me precept that yeah, with Psalm revelation. 18. They were trying to hide from the wrath of the Lamb. Indeed. They the wicked. They cut hide from it. Indeed. He just told you the group that it may be hid in the day of Jehovah's anger. Indeed. He just told you the group. And tell me this don't precept perfectly with this. Watch this. It says, Psalm 18, 3, I will call upon the Most High who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Mm. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Most High and cried unto my Elohim. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. And it goes on to say that the most high, man, he gave he gave the ops the business, you know, and I think about it, it says around the throne of the most high, there's lightning and clouds right. above him. So the, the father, he's always charged, bro. And that, that's what prayer is and meditation and fasting. We plugging into that charge that's in the throne. The mm. throne room of the most high all the way in the seventh heaven, like Enoch said, the highest heaven. Our spirit is plugging into him. That's why in the scripture, whenever it talks about the throne, it talks about 10,000 times, 10,000 of angels and fire and lightning because you charging into the source that powers the worlds, bro. The source that powers the universe. You plugging into that. That's why the scripture always says when the spirit of the most high came upon these brothers, 
that they would go out there and do work. Like the spirit of the most high came upon Samson. He ripped a lion in half. Mm -hmm. Spirit of the most high came upon uh, Elijah. It said this man outran Ahab's chariot. He was running about 80 miles an hour, bro. The spirit of the most high came upon brothers and sisters. Peter baptized 3000, you know, right. like so, so many examples that whenever Philip, the Philip, uh, right after he baptized the Ethiopian unit. Yeah, he he he, tra was, he transported through a portal. Yeah, Took him so like, man, that's why we got to plug into that charge, so they're man. They're trying to counterfeit those things with um, with technology. Mm. You know, because you know, like we say, the father's the father's always way uh, way ahead. You know, we were talking about some earlier. You know, even with the psychotronic weapons they have now. You know, and you know, you hear the word psycho there, so it's stuff that messes with your mind, basically. Um, you know, the the EMPs, electromagnetic pulses. Uh, you know, they just shooting different, you know, things, different frequencies, you know, through your head and through your mind, like stuff that doesn't quote unquote harmonize with your body. Remember, we're mostly made up of water. Mm. So things like that easily, easily um, affect you, easily affect us, you know. Uh, really, we need to stay away from microwaves too, putting microwaves like, you know, because, you know, those are harmful, you know, as well. Like, usually I just do an oven. It takes a little longer, but remember, we're talking about patience. Sometimes you got to do stuff, you know, um, you got to be a little more, you know, diligent, diligent in your search to find, you know, stuff that, that, that does harmonize, you know, correctly with your body. And even when they, you know, change the deal with the hurts and things of that nature, you know, you got the 440 and the 432, you know, even with that, you know, as it pertains to music and like sound when it, you know, comes to music, you know, that's why they would make movies kind of like the sound of music and stuff like that, because, you know, they understand that they can tune it to a certain, we're seeing it, 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 it send a certain they send certain emotions out now too you know and that's why they pump out a lot of them see that's that's you know like that that's talking about stuff that'll make people fearful that'll make people you know do wicked things because you know the one who you know in a sense runs the industry you know is, is the adversary is it does why he's making these crazy deals why a lot of you know y'all are hearing about that now or basically that similar offer that you know he gave to you know yahoo uh you know to to you know, about him basically sell his old, you know, he gives the people, and a lot of people, you know, took it. That's why they go, you know, into the, they go into the quote unquote church a lot. And he got quite a bit of people out there. We can go down, I can roll down a list. You can roll down a list of people. It's easy to find. You can go online. We can roll down a list of people, you know, that, that happened to, um, you know, I mean, a few, you know, quick, easy ones. I mean, uh, Fantasia, you uh, Jodeci, you know, but most know, you know, Fantasia's cousins of, you know, KC and Jojo. So, um, Fantasia, Jodeci, you know, uh, Whitney Houston, um, the list go on and on, uh, Faith Evans, uh, I mean, the list just goes on, uh, Shantae Moore, her dad is a pastor, so, you got, you know, you got those, you know, those groups, uh, Jay, you got, you know, those, but that start off in that, and it says that, you know, the adversary wants to do that, because it's like, it's actually one of the crown jewel kind of things that, as far as in his mind has to do is try to take one that he definitely knows was all to do something like that. A greater was given that gift to do that for the most high and then have them come to his idea and basically lead a bunch of people astray. You know, he, he was to do that. And if we were to just really sit and go down that list, it's a long list. It's gave you a few right there, but you can do research on that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot to that. Indeed. And I'll I tell y'all what, we, we just wanted to come in here and go through some scriptures. Uh, most high willing, we're going to be back at, at another time doing uh, another talk. One, one topic we wanted to get into was watching in the spirit of the most high. But uh, that, that's something we'll touch on. But I really think even this discussion right here was was packed with some jewels. Really hope that uh, you brothers and sisters uh, enjoyed that. And our uh, brother Patrick has uh, a few more scriptures he wanted to to add in before we say shalom for now. I just want to add something real quick. We were talking about the sapphires. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with sapphires and end with the thing about the sapphires. Let's do it. Um, when you think of, uh, when you think of, it's interesting that they use the word company for mm -hmm. stuff. So when you think of, or when you think of that kingdom come, or you think of that kingdom company, you know, the word, 
when you look at P-A-N-Y, mm -hmm. company, but it's interesting, they don't have an E there. But if you look at it, you could have an E there, and it'd be like, come, punny, right? Mm. But the punny word, if you look at that part of punny, that's a word. Pane, mm. pani, pana, panim, which is like face. Mm. Like when you saw Jacob, when you saw Jacob after he wrestled the angel and talked about the place was Peniel. Yeah, I've right? seen the like most high face, face to face. Face of Elohim. So when you think of a ruby, a ruby is a stone, right? A ruby is a ruby is a stone. In fact, it's a blood red stone. Kind of like when you think of, like Edom and you think of, okay, face is like flush. Like flush, what? Red. Mm. So, ruby is a stone. In fact, a blood red stone, a sapphire. Sapphire is closely related, of course. Not red, though, but it's closely related. So, when the elders and them also saw, like we talked about, the elders and them saw the Elohim of Israel on their feet was a stone. Mm. Okay. So, it can also be what? A corner. Corner and stone. Cornerstone. Mm. Remember, Yash is what? The cornerstone. True indeed. He's the headstone. He's the head of the corner. It said that the stone that the builders rejected has become what? The head of the corner. Indeed. So, and I got, I got this one. Okay. Here's another one real quick. I just thought of that when cornerstone came to my head, yeah, because, and it even goes in with capstone. Why, why, why do I bring this up? When you think of the Alabama Crimson Tide, right? Crimson. We know that's like blood. Yeah, you know, uh, the Crimson is even mentioned there. So, when you think of them, they have a they have a place there. They have a, they have a spot there and they have the stone there too. And it's called the Capstone. That's what it's called. And if you look at the team that is the best team in college football, if we're talking about perennially, it's definitely them. They either win that championship or they get beat or they get close to it. It's pretty much, it's, it's consistent. It's not many years, they're pretty much not that. They have the most natural championships by far. So, that is the quote-unquote or apex of the college ball scene. You know, and interesting enough, you know, their uh, deal that you see on the hats is an A, right? A like alpha. Uh, they're, they're elephant, big Al. Uh, capstone, like, and when you hear capstone, the twist that, quote-unquote, the Masons, the Builders, that's when you hear that builders there, that would be in with them, like the Masons, those that don't, those that don't believe, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, that build without the actual corners that you need to even build, that try to build according to <clears throat> their own God will or their own, uh, or according to the deficit. So they don't build or they don't dig, quote-unquote, too. They don't dig uh, waters out of the correct, they don't, they dig uh, not by instruction of the lawgiver. Mm -hmm. So what you see is um, when you think of the capstone, also, if you look on your dollar, you see what? You see that quote-unquote pyramid and all nine things like that. Where at the top, they call it out with the capstone. Mm -hmm. So they jacked that idea and twisted it and stole it. But the cornerstone is used on the Shia. And so mm. to make that point of that too, so when you see that Rumble wins a time and all these different things, understand there's a there's reason for that. Understand why they have two coaches that have won that many titles. Understand those different things and that these are the types of things that they're trying to to um to push in um that arena as well. So <clears throat> So you see, um, so back to what we were talking about as far as the sapphire. Mm -hmm. So you see, it can be a corner, cornerstone, right? Or turn, to turn to, to turn towards, to have your face towards, not hiding your face from them. Mm -hmm. Like the father said when he was, you know, mad at, mad at his people. I like the heavenly father, he always said when he was mad at Israel, mad at his people. Mm -hmm. So, or turn to, so you want him to turn towards you. I mean, you want him to be looking favorably upon you, shine his face upon you, like when you hear the, what is known as the ironic blessing in uh, Numbers chapter 6, toward the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, may your bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, right? So you want that. May, you know, he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's what you want. Mm. You know, face to face. What is it? As uh, as in water, face and the face. So the heart of and the man. Mm. Okay, so... 
you have a return to turn to, you know, is the move face towards. So even like when he tells us to repent, we need to turn our face to him instead of what? Turn our back. Mm. So that's like when somebody said, "Man, you turn, you turn, you turned your back on us." And I can remember if they said it in like you too, like you turned your back on us. It was something like that. It's moving, but I, it might have been like it. But <clears throat> so it's turn to the cornerstone, look to his face, so that then what you be conformed to the image of the son, which is what we are supposed to be. So that's that's showing intimacy, face to face, like how you see even in te- you now they always talk about inner face. Well, wow. that's the part that you what quote unquote face to face with your quote unquote phone so that tells you something else about what they're trying to do technology. they want you to what have a <laughs> experience or quote unquote intimacy with that that's why you see them moving more and more towards Which means what? To artificial intelligence that's why you see them moving more and more towards that that's why they have your phones talking and doing all the other you know extra stuff like that boondocks even show you that boondocks a cartoon when they being funny shows you that when they talking about Siri on there and they had the granddad Mary Siri like, it'd it be stuff and stuff. <laughs> but, and, and it's funny, people, you know, and we laugh at it, it's funny, but they, they're actually making a serious, like, actually making a serious point while making it funny. Kind of like Cat Williams did with a lot of stuff. He was serious stuff, but it was, me at the same time, how he was saying, but he was really telling stuff. And that's powerful, because, like, even with, uh, in, in Third Enoch, it talks about, as, as people go into the throne of the Most High, they pass through hallways right. where angels are facing each other. Mm. And then the Ark of the Covenant had the cherubim, the cherubim facing each, each other. other. Yeah. So yeah. so it's like uh that 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 creates like a, a energy and spirit of the most high whenever we interface with him his spirit in prayer. That's so right. like what what you just brought forth there, right. what we're doing is the righteous version of what those who talk about like the, the final capstone of the pyramid or the final uh the final act yeah. that they want to carry out, like Ours is the righteous version, and we look into the Messiah as being that capstone. He's the cornerstone. He's the headstone. And remember, we're lively stones too. You remember, mm. like uh, in, in Shepherd of Hermes, Hermes? that it, it said that each and every one of us was a brick of that tower, yeah. and that, that that was the righteous tower. Like Nimrod tried to build the wicked tower in Shepherd of Hermes, he said that he saw the king, the towers of the kingdom being built by us. Each person that's going to make it to the kingdom. Stand in this place. Like, right. And you know what? I, I really, it, it makes me think uh, whenever the Messiah said, blessed is he who overcomes, because I will give him a white stone. A name and a white stone. And a name on it that only he knows is written. And I think about, it said, New Jerusalem will be made of all men of a precious stone. So I'm thinking, is all the people that going to make it, is they going to have their own brick in the foundation of New Jerusalem? You think about that. You're talking about you know like what I'm saying? They, uh, like when uh, he said, "I'll make you a pillar." It's a church that had that one, like or something that have like the names name of the do- the donators the that, and that stuff. Donated or or uh, built it. Yeah. yeah. So like that, that's possible. I, I don't have no scripture I can go to to say that's what it'll be. But putting two and two together, that makes sense. Because you do have why, the names of the children of Israel on the foundation, right? Because why? Why would Hamashiach give us a stone? Meaning, and then why would he call say that we are lively stones? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's wow, like so they also be like giving us a whole another power too. Because when you get a new name, that's like getting a whole new authority. Because a name, and when we look in the Hebrew, is Shem. Yes, yeah, like Shem, Ham, and Jeff, but Shem. That's an Noah. It's like that. It's name. It's like authority, character. So. Let's not just be naming our children priest. just any type of name, everybody. Let's make make sure it has, you know, I mean, a true meaning of how you want that person character to turn out too. Hallelujah. That, that, that's that's important. Like a name is important. Like what something is called, that's important. That's why they tried to what change our names when we got, you know, when our ancestors got what put in activity and things. They were always try to change. They try to change their name to something after they false god and stuff like that. You even see that in Daniel them situation. Daniel's name was like Judge of L, right? Mm-hmm. Daniel, you had uh, <clears throat> Azariah, Hananiah, Mishael, whom most of us know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? But you see, they changed their names. And even, just like with us, we got those names now, but most of our names, if you looked at it, had what? The other name in it. Indeed, and even in Jasher, it talks about how Moses had like seven, eight different names. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron called him a name. Miriam called him a name. And they all had meaning. 
Yeah, and the and, meaning that it had to them, and he fulfilled every them. one of them. That's what and he was them. that to that specific group of people, whatever name they gave him, he was that. And this was before he fulfilled that destiny. Yep. When he was born, Prophetic. they gave him these different names. Prophetic. Yeah, man, I'm I'm telling you. That's the thing about when you get a name. So it's like, and we know even what you know, Yahusha, his name that he gonna have a name because mm -hmm. what he because just like. He was the oath through which the worlds were made, like it talks about in Enoch. What is that, 69? Yeah. Is that 69 chapters? Yeah. So in his name, everything that exists was created. Yeah. So that means so the new heaven and new name, earth is new name. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's why we so can't... So we get a new name in a white stone. It's just like what? It's just like how we get... So we get that new authority. We get that new body too. Remember, we get what? The glorified body. Indeed. So it's like new. Literally, when he say, "Behold, I make all things," new, he said all things. Then he didn't say some. That's what he said. Behold, I make all things new. He's specific. He's specific. He said all, all wow. things new. You ain't gonna be remember. It's this stuff's gonna be like just so that you align. You borderline remember stuff from this, from this. Cause it's gonna be just such. You know, is an awe-inspiring thing. That's what's so beautiful about thinking on the kingdom. It's like, wow, the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem, the new city founded upon peace. Mm. That's the city we should rep. We always want to rep, you know, who we always want to rep for every code, talking about 404. Mm -hmm. Talking about 713. Mm -hmm. Talking about 313. All, all this, this, and this. Man, our area code the code, the password, the area code should be Jerusalem's area code. We should rep that. Indeed. It's like bro talked on you know about on here before. You know, even when he talked about the streets of Jerusalem when he had, you know, that we are it's a Jerusalem like the people. You know, it's about how you know people rep there like that. Like man, y'all yeah, from here. You know, I'm from here, man. Somebody asked us be like New Jerusalem. Just see the look on their face. Just say it and be so serious about it. You know, because the word said we stranger and sojourns in the earth. Indeed. And he say he looked for a city. He said every come up, every return had he been mindful of that. Mm. But he saw what a city who what building and maker was even foundations was. That what it say. He saw that city. That's the city we seek. That's why they try to throw these little fantastical things in these movies and how you looking at that, trying to look for us. He like that, and they want to tell you about. Oh yeah, they want to tell you about neon that's gonna be over in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. seen the little web page. You know the little web page. You know it's a little flashy. It was clean. You know, but you know it. Uh, that that ain't the spot. New Jerusalem gonna smash in there. But you see what? You see these other groups trying to fit that kind of thing. They try to make their own little thing without that. Like like how he brought up the Tower of Babel. They trying to build something again that passed that, you know, surpassed the, you know, the highest uh, edifice of, you know, building in the world. And they still ain't approached where the Tower of Babel height was. Mm. And, and, and interesting enough, you know, people be like, man, it would get toward that. Because Jubilees talk about how high it was. Uh, they, ain't, they ain't been one even close. It said it took almost three days to walk around just the foundation of it. It, That's it, enormous. It's even close, and it ain't and it ain't like them little skinny ones they try to make now because they kind of you know building technology a little bit you know they'll make it real skinny and put it you know and then try to, to try to get it to that height. Nah, them boys had it big, wide, and it was up. So you got about you know we look at you know we look at those times like oh they was a uh, oh they was. Quote unquote, uncivilized. They didn't know nothing about nothing, man. But their technology was smashing on, you know, it's not all about. Mm. Now, some of those behind the scenes, they might know more about it, you know, because the only ones are giving them stuff. But at the same time, <coughs> you know, we got to stop letting them nick and downs with stuff. Oh, we need a new one. Oh, we need an update deal. Oh, this one got three count. Oh, we fascinated by it. Like, you know, it's oh, we're not saying don't see it all because the other, you know, also has people like like we're doing right now, you know, over one of these, you know, devices. Interesting, they call it that, right? Over one of these devices, it's just like don't let it become a idol. Don't you know? Don't let it become an idol that you know that you worship. You can't live without. You can't go somewhere and leave your dog on phone right there and then go somewhere else. Now, I understand, you know, we keep it a little more now. You know, we got families and things of that nature, but. You know, we had a time where we didn't have this stuff and we still have families and things of that nature. So that just means we need to get more in tune with the Holy Spirit. Then. You know, it tells us what, you know, what's going on and, and how to actually help. You know, the phone will just, you know, say, you know, you just talk. Oh, you'll be you'll have to ask them. But with the Holy Spirit, you know, 
I'll tell you what, y'all. My, my son then came in the room, so we, we're going to let him say shalom for now. Me, me. Say shalom to the people, too. Shalom. All right. We thank y'all for listening. We're going to be back with some more on this, all right? Peace, family.